are the favorites to win a national title who can legitimately be called a contender who has the pieces to make a run to the Final Four will break that all down for you over the next three weeks in our Contender Series. Last week, we gave you our Final Four sleepers and talked about six different Final Four contenders, Louisville, West Virginia, Villanova, Wichita State, USC and Miami, that are just flawed enough that we can't call them contenders. There is a pretty clear-cut delineation between the four or five best teams, the clear national title challengers, and the rest of the country this season. This week, we will be taking a deeper dive into five of those teams. What makes them good enough to win a national title but why won't they win a national title we've gone through Kentucky and Kansas already this week. Today, well take a look at Arizona. More the enigma of Miles Bridges NBC Sports preseason All-American team Alonzo Trier Chris Caduto Getty Images Why they will win There are two ways to answer this question. The first is relatively simple. Arizona has three things that, alone, would make them relevant in the Pac-12 title and Final Four discussion. They have a junior that will be a preseason All-American, in the mix for National Player of the Year and could end up leading all of high Mahor basketball and scoring this season. His name is Alonzo Trier. They have the potential number one pick in the 2018 NBA draft, and his name is not Alonzo Trier. It's DeAndre Aiden, who has a shot at earning those same accolades that Trier will be in the mix for. Those two will be coached by Sean Miller, who is the best coach in the country to never reach a Final Four and may be the best coach in the country, period. But, and this may actually be more important than any of those three things individually, Arizona also has the perfect blend of ridiculous incoming freshman talent and talented returning veterans that can provide the kind of leadership and experience that you don't see from 18 and 19 year olds. The Wildcats will likely start just one freshman this season. Three of their starters, Trier, a junior, and seniors, Dushan Ristic and Parker Jackson Carter Wright, are upperclassmen. Sophomore Raul Elkins should also slide into the starting lineup center. He returns from a foot injury that is expected to keep him out for the first couple of weeks of the season. The best teams during the one-and-done era, Kentucky's title-winning team in 2012, Duke's title-winning team in 2015, Kentucky's Final Four team in 2015, have all had that blend. It's why Arizona will be in the top three of every preseason top 25 you see coming out this month. Big 10 Preview ACC Preview Atlantic 10 Preview Mountain West Preview DeAndre Ayton Getty Images Why They Want Win Before we get into the off-the-court stuff, let's talk on the court. The way that I see it, there are four things to be worried about with this Arizona team. Let's walk through each one of them, in order of the most concerning to the least concerning one. Point guard play There are two point guards on Arizona's roster as of today. One of them is a freshman named Alex Barcelo, a borderline top 100 prospect that, in an ideal world, won't be playing major minutes for a national title contending team, at least not as a freshman. The other is Parker Jackson Cartwright, a senior and former four-star recruit that has spent his entire Arizona career has the second option at the point. The last two years, he played behind Kadeem Allen, a converted scoring guard and donatious defender that turned himself into the kind of a player that piqued the interest of the Boston Celtics in last year's NBA draft. He was a physically imposing, six foot three menace that also happened to be a 43% three-point shooter. Before that, Jackson Cartwright slotted in behind TJ McConnell, another savvy, defensive menace that has carved out an NBA career for himself. That is not the kind of point guard that Jackson Cartwright is. He has some of the same skills offensively that McConnell had, and his ability to facilitate at the point without needing shots to be happy will be valuable on a roster that has enough guys that want to score, but can he have an impact defensively? Is he a leader the way that past Arizona point guards have been the answer to both of those questions? Maybe yes, but if they are no, will some combination of Barcelo, Alonzo Trier and Emmanuel Ackett rotating through those lead guard minutes be enough for Arizona to win a title? We've seen what happens when title favorites, ahem, Duke, have question marks at the point, and until Jackson Cartwright proves otherwise, he falls into that category. 2. Which DeAndre Ayton are we going to see this year? There has never been a question about the amount of talent that Ayton has. He's 7 foot with a 7 foot 6 wingspan. He's athletic, he's fluid, he's mobile and he has a back to the basket game and 3 point range. He, quite literally, is the prototype for a big man in this modern era of basketball. But he doesn't always play like it. The knock on him has always been his motor. When he decides to show up, like he did at Peach Jam during the summer of 2016, he dominates anyone that gets in his way. Wendell Carter, Mitchell Robinson, Marvin Bagley 3, but we've yet to see Aiden consistently churn out those kind of performances. His detractors will say it is because he is lazy, or he isnt competitive, or he doesn't love basketball you know the cliches. 
Others will tell you that it is because he was never challenged at the high school level and that when he was, he showed up to play. That idea is supported by the reports coming out of Tucson, that Aiden has been terrific to date. The truth is that we won't know which Aiden we are going to see until we actually see him. He might end up being the best player in college hoops. He also might end up being Perry Jones. 3. Are there enough shots to go around Alonzo Trier is going to be Arizona's go-to guy. He may end up being the best scorer in college basketball this season. He's going to get his shots. Then there's Raul Elkins, a former five-star prospect that averaged double figures as a freshman and opted to return to school to try and boost his NBA stock. He's going to need shots, too. Aiton is going to need shots. Dushan Ristic is going to need post-touches. The bottom line is this, the hardest thing to do at this level of college basketball is to convince players to buy into a role. John Calipari is the best at it, but he doesn't even have a perfect track record. In a perfect world, the number one pick might end up being Arizona's third option offensively this season. Is everyone going to be okay with that four? Who plays the four like the point guard spot? The four is going to be something of a question mark for Arizona this season. Aiton will likely end up starting there, because Ristik is a senior and because he is much more skilled on the perimeter than the seven-foot Serbian. But I still think that Aiden's best position at the college level is as a small ball five, and if he is playing at the five, who does Miller line up at the four? Keanu Pinder might be the answer, but he is a Juco transfer that played all of 12 minutes per game last season. It might be Ira Lee, but an all-freshman front court, ISNT always the easiest answer. Maybe Miller plays Ackett there and fully dives into the small ball era, I don't know. And frankly, I'm less concerned about this than I am intrigued. I think Arizona has enough talent and enough different pieces that it should be fine however Miller decides it will come together. Assuming the season goes as planned, which brings us to 5. Arizona's involvement with the FBI investigation Arizona is all over the FBI complaints that came down last month. Book Richardson, an assistant coach that had been with Sean Miller for 11 years, was arrested. Richardson allegedly took bribes to influence where players on the roster would invest their money and accepted a $15,000 payment that was earmarked for a class of 2018 prospect named Javon Quinterly. Two players currently on the Arizona roster were mentioned by Richardson during the commission of the alleged crimes, although the FBI did not release their names, and another assistant coach, who was with the program as of last spring, was also involved in a dinner with the uncle of one of Arizona's top recruits. And we don't know if that's all that the FBI has. All we know is what they have released. Are there going to be more Arizona players or coaches involved in this scandal? Will Arizona get wind of any potential arrests or players that may be deemed ineligible? Is this a situation where the Wildcats will try to fall on their own sword? Only time will tell. Final four sleepers Louisville Villanova West Virginia USC Wichita State Miami Rawl Elkins Ethan Miller JT Images Prediction Barring some kind of craziness, and craziness enveloping this Arizona season certainly has a greater than zero possibility, Arizona is going to end up winning the Pac-12 regular season title. That became a safe bet after the Pac-12 decided that the Wildcats will only be playing UCLA and USC once, and that both of those games will be played in Tucson. But Arizona fans probably don't care all that much about Pac-12 titles at this point. They've been there. What they want is a Final Four, which is more or less the only thing that Sean Miller doesn't have on his coaching resume at this point. The 48-year-old currently holds the title of best coach to never make a Final Four, something he inherited from Mark Few, who inherited it from Bill Self, who inherited it from Jim Calhoun. Point being, sooner or later, Miller is going to make that run to the final weekend of the college basketball season. And with the amount of talent, depth, experience and versatility he has with this group, I fully expect that this will be the year he gets it done. If, you know, nothing crazy happens.